Dora is here. Okay. So Toastmaster saying, dear fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests, who doesn't love the good old days of adolescence? I mean, I can remember my days as a teenager, spending the daily allowances on video game stores, the barefooted soccer matches, and the overall foolishness of immaturity. So back when I was a teenager, I always found myself in a fight or flight situation. When I, when I was the first grader in the middle school, I still remember my first dispute, which turned out to be a fight later. I, still, I think you all remember your first fight in the middle school, no? So there was this guy named called Mustafa, and he was you know, a big guy. He was twice my width. So. And we, we moved past the swearing and cussing uh, term. So now he's uh, challenging me. He's fr standing in front of me, and uh, we're pushing each other. And he's telling me that if I was brave enough, I should try to lay a hand on him. Okay. I know Mustafa is a big guy and all, but I wouldn't let my bravery go questioned. So what I did is I laid the hand on his shirt and I tore the first button of his shirt apart. Now for the next three minutes, that was the only time I laid hand on Mustafa because basically I became his punching bag. But for me, uh, I still maintain that I won the challenge because he challenged me. He challenged me as a bravery challenge and I won it. Doesn't matter if he took me as a punching bag later. So I always thought that this is a quality I have, that I act by heart, regardless of the abilities, of the actual abilities I have. In my younger years, I always went through disputes, carols, fights, and which most of them didn't end well for me because in my simple mind, it was mostly a win or lose situation. If I didn't win, that I'm definitely losing. And I'm a sore loser. I don't like losing. So this mentality helped me through my early EA stages. It helped me get better grades, helped me get into a better university, definitely helped me with the sport contest and also get the recognition of my colleagues. But progressing through life, when I grew up, I realized that putting myself in a win-lose self-ranking system is backfiring. The fights right now are way more complex than what we used to have back in the uh, high school or middle school. Uh, it could be a person, it could be an entity, it could be an idea that you're fighting. The, the outcome of the bargain is not definitive anymore, it's relative. So the entire methodology of negotiating with people, the methodology that I created for myself is based on card games. Basically, it's a guard game between you and the opposite party. You have your own cards. They have their own card set of cards. And both of you are waiting for the right moment to expose the right card. But what I saw is, what I noticed is, most people do not reveal their cards and they wait for the next person to, feel, to reveal his first. Now this works most of the time if you are following their lead deliberately. But at times, I take it, maybe I'm a little bit uh, harsh on myself or others, but I take it as a lack of confidence move. I don't have to wait for others because I cannot take the lead like that. So what I need to do, I need to assess the situation and plan my approach and then expose my cards in a power play showdown. And that way, if I believe and I, if I have faith in what I have to offer, in that way, I, cannot take, I can take the lead because if I stayed on the second, I cannot take the lead. So I will share with you this experience that I had with, at work like four days ago. Uh, I work for LG Electronics and I take pride in representing that company because I, I trust their products. So I have faith in what I have to offer. So part of my job is finding new projects for my company. So I was driving, driving downtown Baghdad, my car, also a Korean car. <laughs> it's a different type of the Korean industry here. So I was driving my car and I saw a building under construction. So, okay, I parked my car. I went inside the project. I, I'm looking for the person in charge. And lucky for me, I found the lead contractor. Now, some of you know that lead contractors in a construction site are majorly, ma mainly civil engineers. 
So civil engineers, I am working in a mechanical systems field. And this guy is a civil engineer. Civil engineers are mechanically illiterate. No offense, civil engineers, anybody is a civil engineer over here. So, okay, that will be easy. I can go there. I can convince him of my, my systems very easily. So I go there, I introduce myself. I listen to him go on about his project, what kind of systems he needs for uh, his project, for his building, his request. I got his request now. I am explaining why our systems, air conditioning systems, fit his request, fit his building, the interior decoration, cost efficiency, and all. Now I am being second, but uh, not for long. I already planned my approach based on his uh, initiative. And now I am about to drop my power play move. I'm about to expose my cards and win this argument, take the lead. But I am planned, I'm gradually going there. And then another guy gets into the office and he greets us and says, hey, uh, hello, Salam. My name is engineer, let's call him X. My name is engineer X. And I am the lead mechanical engineer for the, this project. Okay. This got a lot more serious for me. <laughs> there is no easy part here. Okay. This guy is like 15 years older than me and uh, probably a uh, senior in this field. He takes the first chair, the facing chair, and starts asking me, Thorough questions, technical questions. He's testing me. Now he's testing me to see if I got what it takes to offer them a business solution. Now I'm stuck in second place. I don't like stuck at second place. So I'm there ask, uh, answering his questionnaire and I took, I saw a window. I took that window and I hit him with a maneuver. A maneuver I like to call Khalid ibn walid maneuver because the, some of you know Khalid ibn walid He came back from the front and <laughs> and took the lead. So I hit him with that maneuver, demonstrated my knowledge in the field. And lucky for me, the guy is sold. Now, eventually everything went out uh, in the best truth for me. So without further ado, Sun Tzu in his book, The Art of War says, strategy without tactics is the slowest way to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. So gentlemen, even though I still, I realize that I still work by the heart, regardless of the equipment I have to handle my daily situations, I still act by the heart until 30 years old. So let your tactics stem out of your mind and your strategy follows your heart.